on the shop floor with Travis Bowman, decoking specialist from FlowServe. And we're going to be speaking about the evolution of the cutting tool nozzle housings and how they've changed to extend the life of the nozzle and the cutting tool itself. So what else we got going on over here? What we have here is uh, the short and slimline housings were used on the outside for the cutting and on the outward, outward facing nozzles of the boring. Um, we did use these original short ones for the, in, for, the in, for the inward facing ones, but we were finding that we were having trouble in that it was impacting the performance of the auto shift cartridge. So we redesigned them to be a little bit longer to clear that area so that when they did spray, you wouldn't be back washing or washing away the cartridge itself. So we, we introduced the longer, the long nose slim line design. And these are only, only used in the inward facing boring nozzle position. Okay. And you've told me a, a fun fact about these guys. So this assembly actually has a slight angle to it. Correct. And the, the, the two inward facing jets actually come together. They converge together approximately six to eight feet below the, uh, cover, the cover tool. Six to eight feet below is where you get the maximum cutting power. Correct. So if, if you're putting that water directly on the surface of the coat bed, you're not using the tool properly. You're not getting the, the most efficient. You're not getting out the most efficient possible. Yeah. So not only is it not good for the equipment to hammer it down, you're also so not cutting as quickly as you not, could. You're not cutting as designed to intended. Exactly. Okay. And then what's going on with this one? Well, the uh, slim line. Thank you. The slim lines we held in place. Here's an example of a new slim line. Here's a, a snap ring that holds this whole assembly in place. Over uh, time, we had problems with removal of the, of the snap ring and other issues. So uh, some people asked us, well, can we get rid of that snap ring design? And the answer was yes. And we designed what's now we call the bolt-on design where it still has a similar housing, but now we can bolt, those, bolt, uh, bolt the, uh, the housing on the nozzle assembly on rather than um, pulling it in place with a snap ring. And one of the things that's nice about this one, I think, is that you have a lot of mass here. So eventually this is going to wear out. And this is what we see in this nozzle where that internal metal is relatively thin. Here you have all this material around it. This one's probably going to last a lot longer and give you more life before you have to swap it out. Correct. So uh, this is the, the nozzle apertures, and this is for plant X. And then this, and this is a, a boring nozzle. This is also a boring nozzle for plant Y. And the diameters are slightly different. Correct. And you need to check these periodically, right? Correct. And how, how do you check them? Uh, we have a, 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 you know, a gauge that we can use to test them in the, in the wear gauge, or you can use a pin or a drill bit or something, something or like that. So, something calibrated, because these something. are a very specific opening. Correct. And once, as they start widening out, you have to change them. Correct. What's the, what's the level at which you need to change them? I'm sorry? Uh, how frequently? Or how frequently? Oh. What's the criteria? When cutting time started increasing. <laughs> when cutting time started increasing or the wear opens it up by more than 5%. 5% of the print size. Correct. Yeah, there you go. So the original diameter, 5%. 5%, yes. You should get rid of it. Get rid of it. But probably people aren't checking them as often as- Probably they're not checking them as often as- As you might think. As, as, correct. And